Well, I'm sure by now you wonder what kind of site this crazy old man's created. Uh, I've written all this on Google Maps. Uh, the reason I wrote it was because I wanted some means of storing tracks of railroads in Indiana on my Garmin. And I found out that the satellite imagery has improved so much that you can actually fly over these tracks and have very, very good uh, graphics. So I went ahead and created these tours. Uh, this project's about maybe 20% done at best, but I thought I'd just turn it loose. And I, there are a few of them done here. And I'll show you how to access these tracks, download the KMZ files to Google Earth, and open them up in Google Earth. So when you open the link, this is what it looks like initially. Uh, uh, notice over here we have a list of tracks that I have mapped on this map over here to the right where my little hand is. And it comes up compressed, so you can expand map of Indiana Railroads where it's got a link to the written instructions and this video and more importantly than my instructions you can expand these tracks that list every single railroad that I have mapped this over here on this map and you can get to those tracks either by clicking on like we'll click on the C-I-N-D from Shelbyville to Cincinnati. Uh, notice how it highlights over here on the map. Or you can expand this map out and just click on the C-I-N-D and access it there like that. Either way it works. And I'm not, I can't remember if I got the C-I-N-D done yet or not. I know I have to be an old from Vincent Cincinnati done because I grew up in Washington, Indiana and this is my favorite railroad of all time so I did it first and so what I'll do is expand this map out and um, just click on the line there and notice there's a picture of the big tunnel here not all of them have pictures not all of them have information but uh, this one has a picture and it also has a Wikipedia link. And notice these ugly links. I'm not smart enough to figure out how to edit these in Google Maps and not have Google Maps correct me back to the way it was. So uh, these links work, so I finally just gave up and leave it like this. So this is what it looks like in our description. i got a Wikipedia link, and you click on that. And it opens in a new tab in your browser. Um, Speaking of browsers, I'm demonstrating this in Firefox. It works well in Google Chrome. Uh, Internet Explorer, you're on your own. Uh, it works, at least in Windows 8, but it's slower than palm water, especially to download the KMZ files. So I'm going to demonstrate only in, uh, I'm running a Linux box here in Ubuntu. And uh, I'm going to show you how to download the KMZ file. And by the way, if you're using Firefox or Chrome, in Windows it works exactly the same way. So now then, I'm going to download this KMZ file. And I have my browser set up to display these KMZ files in uh, a KML uh, displayer. And that's an option you have in um, Firefox and Chrome. Uh, if you don't have that set up, it will just automatically come up and ask if you want to download the file. And uh, what I like about this viewer is you've got Street View. And you have also can view it in satellite mode. And notice there's my old chicken. CSX. We'll say what the S, the S and the X mean. <laughs> yeah, let's see, and you can actually zoom in uh, to your heart's desire. And you see my track here just follows the railroad, 
and these tracks are extremely accurate if the railroads exist. Now, some of my ghost railroads may be off a few miles. I got those GPS coordinates from old historical maps, and the old map makers didn't have Google Earth to get things as precise as we can now. So, anyway, to download the KMZ file, you just click that little arrow. And in Firefox, it gives you the option to save the file or open with Google Earth. I'm going to leave it on save file because this is the way it would behave in Google Chrome. I'm going to save the file and my browser is set up to save up my downloads folder. So now then, we're going to the Chrome window, or the Google Earth window, that is. And we just come into File, Open, and I automatically have it set up to go to my Downloads folder. And there's my CSX, BNO to Vincennes, dot KMZ. We open it up, and voila, there it is, all the waypoints. Now, notice I don't have the tracks turned the track turned on in Google Earth because I don't want the track on when I fly my tour. Uh, so we now Ghost Railroad, you want that turned on, and here it automatically downloads into your temporary places folder, and there it is the CM CSX being old Vincennes to Cincinnati dot KMC. And there's the folder right there. So we expand that out. And notice here, on that line, we have a little video camera. That'll play the tour. And right below that, we have tracks. And if you wanted that track to display in Google Earth, you click that, and there's our little CSX colored track. But uh, since... We're going to fly this in a P-51 Mustang. We're going to turn that off. And to fly the track, in, we come up here to our video camera and double-click on it. And here we go. We're in a P-51 Mustang with a Merlin motor cruising in an altitude of approximately 1,200 feet above the track. And at 325 miles an hour, so it takes about 20 minutes to fly from Vincennes to Cincinnati in our P-51. And in Vincennes, uh, here we go. Now, if you're in a hurry to get someone somewhere and you have a fast Internet, I'm on Cincinnati Bell in Walton, Kentucky, so uh, it's not the fastest there is. It's I've seen worse, but Hancock Telecom and Greenfield was much faster. But anyway, to speed up, you just click the fast forward button down here. And again, and again, and you did really move. And what I'm looking for is a street view road. Knox County, Indiana doesn't have many roads with street view. Uh, but here's one in Wheatland. So we're going to hop out of our P-51 Mustang and hop right down here to State Road 550 in Wheatland. And I'm going to take a look at the tracks. And it's once great railroad to run 70 mile an hour freights in the 60s and early 70s. What is it, 20 mile an hour track now? Terrible. And I hop back into your P-51 Mustang and go ahead. You just click the play button and we're back in our P-51 going 325 miles an hour. And we head into Shoals. It's kind of flat here and kind of boring, so we're going to hurry up and get to Shoals. Washington. Montgomery, Lagodi, boy, we're getting close. So we'll come back here to 325 miles an hour on our P-51, 
And we're flying along White River there to the right. And now our P-51 in these curves has a tendency to fly sideways. But it does a pretty good job. There's the backbone right there of US-50 heading into Shoals. And if you're familiar with Shoals, uh, there's an overlook here that's open to the public that can overlook this beautiful site. So we'll kick our P-51 back on. And something how 50 takes the high road and the chicken takes the low road there. And we're coming into Shoals. And cross from White River, and there's Shoals. And we're going to head here, fast forward to Willow Tunnel. And you can just kind of play around. And okay, here comes the Willow Tunnel. And notice how beautiful the, the 3D graphics are and Google Earth. I just can't believe what these guys have done. So there's the west end of the Willow Tunnel, and there's the east end of the Willow Tunnel. And this magic, you can actually, I guess you have to be out of the turb to, to actually run the measurements there. But say you want to hop out of here, and I remember that time, 8.53, and you want to measure the, how long that tunnel is. You can just click there. And it's about 1,300 feet. I'm going to clear that out. And say you want to get a great print. Um, see the graves on the, the old chicken. So you come down here to the track, another track folder, right click on your mouse, show elevation profile. And this shows, now you can tell where I didn't quite get things exactly there. You got the little spikes, but this is pretty much the profile. Say so you want to see the grade profile from here. And the screen captures just doesn't work quite so hot. So you put your mouse there, leave your mouse button on, and drag it to there. And again, a screen capture just doesn't work so hot. There we, there we go. Finally, the screen capture. And it shows you the distance of 38 miles and how much the old chicken goes. It's got a maximum grade of 4%. And the average slope through that period is 0.5%. So it's just amazing the information you can gather. And that's just pretty much how you fly the tours and what this site's all about. Now, let's go back to the maps and notice all the links in this thing open in a new tab uh, again I'm not smart enough to figure out how to modify these link names and open in the same window without Google or, or Google Maps correcting it back to what they want but as long as the links work that's what really matters to me and say so you want to see an old pulled up line uh, like uh, the old New York Central from Worthington, Indiana to Frankfurt. And there's that line. And actually this, I kind of cheated on these because uh, this line is actually called the Evansville, Terre Haute Crawfordsville line. But I didn't want to make two different tracks. So I went ahead and continued it on to Frankfurt since the New York Central ran a line ahead from Crawfordsville to Frankfurt. And this gives a description of Wikipedia. 
and tells you who the charter bar and all that. And then there's all kinds of other links you can get from Wikipedia. And then uh, the KMZ file. And we can download it. It'll save the file and come back to Google Earth. And we'll collapse this. And here we're going to open. And there it is, the Conrail of Worthington to Frankfurt. Open it up. And notice how it's right up here. And if I do these pulled up railroads or the rail remove railroads correctly, it'll display the track. So if you don't think ghosts, my tracks are exactly right, you can play with it yourself and improve them. We expand that out. And again, we had the video camera there for our track for our, to play the tour. So I double click on that. And here we are, Worthington, Indiana. And that shows you how the pulled up lines of the rail. My daughter, when she's about five years old, named them P U R R's. <laughs> and uh, so I just kind of stuck with the family. And here we go. And this is where the old line went from Worthington to Terre Haute and Coal City and all those towns. And that's how that works. That's what the pulled up lines look like. And this one was pretty easy to follow. I know the Bef the old Monon Bedford to Bloomfield line was really tough to figure out. Uh, the old, I got these uh, GPS coordinates from uh, Dorm Street Atlas. They still show this line as uh, intact on, a, on my old version of Dorm, but. You go back to the 1920 maps where guys did this manually. Uh, they did a heck of a job of coming as close as they did. I don't, don't know how they did it. And that's how that works. So that's what the remove lines look like, and that's just about it. So have uh, lots of fun. I know I've flown lots of lines. <laughs>